By the end of the 1600s, throughout Europe, the witch hunting hysteria had reached its peak. Thousands were arrested and brought before inquisitors for examination. Under the inquisitors' brutal scrutiny, the accused witches were stripped and searched. Then they were prodded mercilessly with long needles to find the mark of the devil. For the inquisitor, any suspicious wart, mole, or birthmark could be enough to condemn someone to death. Once evidence of witchcraft was found, a confession was required, for it was against the law to execute a witch without one. The practice of torture, which had been banned for centuries, was revived to extract them. Some of the most uh, horrendous and in some ways sophisticated methods of torture that were developed were developed during the Inquisition. Tortures that are really too horrific almost for us to imagine any human being surviving through. The whole phrase, the third degree, can be traced back to this medieval period of torture, that there were three degrees of torture, and that the third degree was the degree that killed the person being tortured. Instruments such as thumb screws, leg screws, head clamps, and the Iron Maiden were all designed to inflict unbearable pain. Incredibly, even under torture, the witch was viewed as highly dangerous. The Malleus Maleficarum warned the torturer never to look a witch in the eye for fear of her evil powers. Because if you look into her eyes, you might have compassion for her. And in the book, it says this is, this is her casting her spell on you. But what that means is there was no room left no room left for the Inquisitor to have any compassion for the person that was being tortured. Under torture, most accused witches confessed to the most heinous of crimes. To avoid more suffering, they told their torturers what they thought they wanted to hear. In the hope of getting these people to confess to uh, the fantasies that uh, judges and inquisitors uh, had developed and indeed had acquired from their, their reading. These people were uh, subject to um, uh, excruciating of physical pain. And we do know that if the pain is severe enough, we will confess to almost anything that our inquisitors want us to confess to. To determine guilt or innocence, the English devised a method known as swimming the witch. If the accused floated, she was judged a witch and condemned to death. If she sank and drowned, she was judged innocent. Either way, the suspect was doomed. For thousands of others in Europe, however, death came by fire. But why this method of execution? Scholars believe it was thought that only when the witch's body had been reduced to ashes would her evil sorcery truly be destroyed. On the fateful day, the condemned would be packed into a wagon and paraded through narrow cobblestone streets to the village square. There, the accused witch was bound to the stake. Records show that on a single day in one village square in Germany, 139 alleged witches were burned to death. The town historian noted that the place of execution looked like a small wood 
from the number of stakes. For the 200 years known as the Burning Times, witch hunts erupted like sporadic wildfires across Europe. The worst persecution would take place in the rural villages of France and Germany. There, under interrogation and torture, suspects were forced to surrender the names of their neighbors. But why did the fury of the witch hunts escalate so rapidly? Who did you practice with? Who else is involved in your rituals? You torture someone enough, you will give what is wanted in order to end the torture. And if it means naming someone, then you name someone. But this begins an escalating circle, an ever-widening circle. And eventually, you would have dozens, maybe hundreds of people who would be named as a result of one or two women originally being identified as witches. Perhaps no town in the 16th century captured the horror of the burning times more shockingly than Würzburg, Germany. There, the overzealous magistrates decided that almost the entire town was possessed by the devil. They condemned 600 people to death. 19 were priests, 41 were children. There were towns in Germany in particular where there were no women left after the inquisitors came through. Everyone was killed. When the fires of the burning times had finally smoldered into ashes, thousands had perished. Exactly how many actually died will perhaps always remain a mystery. Scholars' estimates range from 60,000 to 300,000 victims. Although the fires of the burning times in Europe started to die out by the late 1600s, the witch-hunting frenzy would spread to the New World. 